Hi, I'm Sharon Rowley, and I paint prayer flags. Over the years, I've compiled a palette of motifs that I use to give meaning to my prayers. I'm going to introduce you to these old friends today. First, about my inspiration. I discovered Tibetan prayer flags when my husband Craig started bringing strings of them home from his treks in the Himalayas in the 1990s. Later, we traveled to several cultures still hanging prayer flags after a thousand years. Once hung, prayer flags are considered sacred. The prayers written in Sanskrit are for the good of the community. They're hung by citizens anywhere the winds blow and will carry the prayers to the heavens. New flags are hung next to old ones, tattered by the winds, as a reminder that everything is impermanent. Around the same time we began studying Buddhism. I was particularly drawn to metta, or loving-kindness practice. This practice encouraged me to express my own metta prayers through my art. Over the years I've hung my flags outdoors and indoors, in museums and retreat centers. I've even had an installation of them at Jane Dunawald's studio in San Antonio. I say my prayers with imagery. While I started with only a couple of motifs to express my prayers, I've had to find new ones as my prayers have expanded. When my flags are hung and blow, I do experience the knowing that I've expressed my prayers as best as I can and that they are sent on their way to be heard. Let's start with my motif for kindness. In Asia, the lotus flower is considered sacred and is closely connected in art with the Buddha. He is often seated on a lotus flower pedestal or sometimes holding a lotus flower. In nature, its pristine flower grows out of muddy water, a powerful call to hold one's thoughts and actions calm and wise amidst the chaos of life. To me, it fuels my prayer to express kindness, even when life is challenging. My photographer friend, Karen Howard, shot this photo in Japan and gave me permission to use it in my work. I was drawn especially to it because of the imperfect symmetry of the petals. Every stirring image needs a backdrop. As important as the lotus flower to me is the lotus pod. Hidden inside these beautiful petals is a funky-looking seed pod. I bought dried pods from a floral supplier, and I inked the pods to create silk screens for my kindness background. The crane really was my first prayer motif. Like many children, I folded origami cranes and was told the story of the young girl who made a thousand cranes before dying of leukemia from the bombing of Hiroshima. I was drawn to her saying, I will write peace on your wings and you will fly all over the world. I started off with the angular shape of a folded origami crane, but soon made the wings more natural with feathers to give them some life, and this became my peace crane. On the right, the wings are flapping. This is done using a Photoshop function called Puppet Warp. I fixed the body of the original image in place and pulled down on the wings, which were not fixed. To create a background for my peace cranes, I used the Photoshop tool called Brush and painted my crane with a sweeping motion varying scale and value. On the right, I've further enhanced the brush cranes by discharging them and stitching them with hand-dyed thread. To further explain my prayers, I've positioned my peace cranes in relation to each other. On the left, almost like synchronized swimmers, my cranes are unified. I call the dots that I paint on their chests shields, which in this case connect their motion in a calm circle. On the right, these two cranes, while facing off, are respectfully communicating. We can only pray. We faced a family health crisis, and I had big prayers I needed to send off. But how to symbolize health? I found I needed to create my own motif. I love the spiral in all of its forms, and merging a spiral to the body of my peace crane 
gave me the feeling of a strong, healthy spirit. Later I noticed that the spiral crane could also express joy, especially when two dance, as on the left. Their close proximity creates a great negative space and a vibration, and the shield dots seem to flow between the two to connect them. I was once on a silent re meditation retreat when this calligraphy of energy, looking like a boomerang, shouted out to me. Its use around the dancing cranes further energizes them. On the right, the spiral crane becomes energetic when carried on a wave. Some of my large three feet by four feet flags feature nature scenes. As the first of these flags was about Africa, I researched African trees and found images of the acacia tree to use as a backdrop. The wide graphic trunk is a very powerful image, and I made a separate hand-drawn silkscreen of hash marks for the acacia leaves. I later used this tree in flags about the harvest and in a park scene about children safely at play. I discovered that the acacia silk, uh, leaf silkscreen could be used in other ways. On the left, discharging the leaves in a pattern arching out from the central image adds a lot of movement. On the right, in Photoshop, Craig made a spirograph of the leaf image, which also adds motion to my designs. These last two images are both situations where I discovered an image that resonates with me, and I had to figure out what it could represent in my art. For years, I had a pine cone image pinned to my design wall, calling out to me. Then my design teacher, Lorraine Torrance, asked our retreat group to revisit the golden mean, which is considered to produce the most pleasing design. Previously, I would only seen it represented in rectangular form. However, I am, as you've probably noticed, drawn to circular images. I discovered that a spiral with certain dimensions has that golden mean characteristic having to do with Fibonacci numbers. In nature, the spiral appears as a pine cone, or as a sunflower head. So this is the image that resonated, and from it sprang a series I call this heavenly body. The other image I discovered, outside a most sacred pagoda in Myanmar, was on this gong. In a travel guide, I read that touching the center would cure whatever ails you. On further research, the central motif turns out to be a Buddhist symbol, the eight-petal lotus, which is an abstracted version of my lovely lotus flower. I'm still listening to this new friend to learn what it tells me. So using the imagery that I've shown you, here's a sampling of the flags I've made, starting with On This Path at Jane's Studio in San Antonio. Ten flags, three feet by four feet each, were hung for a week during the Surface Design Association Conference in 2013. Coming back from San Antonio, I created smaller flags, 20 inches square, and I used repetition to increase the length and the power of the strings, which I call a prayer song. I entered a gallery exhibition, which meant that I needed to move my flags inside. But how to capture the experience of the wind blowing the flags' prayers to the heavens? I added organza atop these flags to capture the slight movement of doors opening, viewers walking by, enough so that they fluttered. I added a custom mount an inch from the wall to further encourage movement. The theme of this exhibit allowed me to explore how important the people hanging flags are to my inspiration. This is a tangible evidence of the existence of their faith that their prayers will be heard. Buddhism teaches that change is inevitable, with aging and illness being prime examples. I've used the pine cone like spiral to depict our perfect heavenly body which is obscured over time by layers of organza. The outer imagery of each piece depicts an aspect of aging common to all of us, and in each piece I've included a personal reflection handwritten on the inner organza 
that is the essence of my experience. There are four pieces in the series so far. In this heavenly body, memory, the outer embroidery shows neurons firing or not in our brains. Thank you for taking time to hear my story and listen to my prayers. You can visit my website to see more of my work or view the YouTube of my big flags flying at Jane's studio by typing these links into your browser.